Transformations Translations Translation is just another way of saying move here. This is usually done on a grid that looks something like this using something known as column vectors. Now column vectors tell us exactly how the shape needs to move. It's exactly like normal coordinates where we have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. The top number is the X coordinate and the bottom number is the Y coordinate. That means that the top number tells us how far left or right the shape moves. Now remember, if we have a positive value, that means the shape moves to the right. And if we have a negative value, that means the shape moves to the left. Now the bottom number in our column vector tells us how far up or down the shape needs to move. Once again, if we have a positive number, that means our shape moves up. And if we have a negative number, that means our shape moves down. Now remember, when we move the shapes, they do not change size or shape. Column vectors also show up in the topic of vectors, but that's another story for another day. So, if we have shape A, we might be asked to draw where shape A would be if we translate it with the vector minus 2, 3. So one good quick way of doing these questions is to pick a single point on our shape like this and uh, we're going to use this as our starting point. First we look at the top number to see how far left or right the shape needs to move. Then we look at the bottom number to see how far up or down the shape needs to move. So in this case we move 2 across to the left and then we move 3 up and that's where we move our starting point to. Now we can just draw our original shape around this point. So we know from the first point that we draw a straight line down roughly about that long and another line across roughly about this long and the last line can just join the two points together. However, if you're using this method, be sure that when you draw the final shape, it's the same as the original shape in every way. Another slightly longer but more reliable way of doing these questions that also avoids any risk of drawing the shape incorrectly when we do the final shape is basically just to use tracing paper. Using this method, we draw the whole original shape. Then we move our starting point exactly like we did before according to the column vectors. But this time we move the whole tracing paper. Now we can see exactly what the shape will look like and where the shape will be when we've moved it. And once you've done this, you can just draw in the actual shape on the sheet of paper. And once you've done that, it's game over, job done, collect your medal, you've won. So here's another type of question. Shapes A and B are identical shapes. Describe the translation of shape A onto shape B. Now with these questions, all we do here is pick a single point on the shape once again, our famous starting point. Then we need to track down how far away the point is on the first shape, shape A, to the same point on our second shape, shape B. So we record how far we move along the x-axis, remember right is positive and left is negative. Then we record how far we move on our y-axis, up is positive and down is negative. So in this case along the x-axis we move plus 4 places, that's to the right, and along the y-axis this point is negative 6 places, so that's downwards. Our final column vector, our translation, would be 4 and minus 6. Once again, you've done this, job done, full marks, next question.
If you like this series, be sure to comment, like and subscribe to be kept updated on new in-depth videos and most importantly share. I mean, what's the point of knowledge if you can't share it, right? And if we can make some people not give up on maths because of these videos, then our job is done. Thanks again for watching and for learning. Peace.